Thank you. Then we are beginning our morning uh, message. It's an uh, unusual one, and it's uh, charged. The topic is charged with blasphemy. Uh, you see these uh, amazing steps up here, and of course they are the old steps that led up to the uh, house of Caiaphas, uh, the high priest. The way they would have taken Jesus up, and the way Peter would trudged up, uh, you know, uh, a bit. Uh, put off you know and uh, and uh, quite amazing so uh, the location there that's the location leading up to uh, there and uh, it's uh, uh, yes Caiaphas house and it's called you know Gallica 2 uh, in Latin which means cockcrow uh, and uh, right so charged with blasphemy uh, the, the fierce arrest, verse 55. The, verse 55, the, the fierce arrest. Uh, thank you. The fierce arrest, right? -o. And uh, it's in verse 55 here. I'm needing a little more light on my, the word. In that hour, Jesus said to the multitude, Have you come out as against a robber? with swords and clubs to take me. I sat daily with you uh, teaching in the temple and you did not seize me. And so uh, they come to, as Jesus put it, to seize Jesus. And it was a, a, a terrible way for to take such a man that was without sin and, and did not deserve this to be taken and to be a, such a, a multitude, a contingent of soldiers and uh, temple guards and all that to arrest Jesus. Uh, so they treated Jesus like a criminal, you know, like a terrible criminal, like these men who commit awful crimes and uh, all that sort of thing that's going on. And of course the, the guards have to come out armed to the teeth to, to take them. And there it says, the great title, armed to the teeth. Uh, so that's the word, they were armed to the teeth. In John 18, 12, he goes into a little bit more uh, graphic about it. Then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. There it was. They took him in. Uh, a great detachment of troops, it says, you know. Quite amazing. And the captain of the officers. So they were very serious about it. And they wanted to definitely to take Jesus in. So the Apostle John, that's who we're reading there, informs us they took Jesus to Annas. And why to Annas? Uh, Caiaphas was the official high priest, but you see Annas was um, the one that was ex uh, that the Jews uh, accepted more and looked to, but uh, uh, the Romans uh, deposed Annas and they put uh, Caiaphas in his place, and so uh, Caiaphas was the official then we'd say high priest. Uh, that's the way of it all, right? And so the Sanhedrin, of course, were the seventy-one members that gather together, most assembled, I imagine, maybe not all of them, but most of them were assembled there uh, at that. Right. But, of course, it was, what? A false trial. How a false trial? Well, first of all, it was organized at night. And they tell me uh, it wasn't legal to have a trial at night. So, quite amazing, wasn't it? Right. So, the court. The court met all before these men who were there. There were the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the, the whole Sanhedrin, 71 of them. In Matthew verse 57, And those who had laid hold of Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes, the great learned men of the law, and the elders were assembled. All the leaders, they called them uh, leader, the elders, the leaders in the country, elders, of course, uh, not just by age, but uh, in rank, you know. And uh, of course, it's where the churches use that title uh, of elders. So, but 
then they came up then with the, the flawed witnesses. The flawed witnesses. Why were the flawed? Well, why? Why were the flawed? Well, the witnesses have to agree, don't they? Normally, in the Bible, it talks about two or three. Yes, every word would be established by two or three uh, witnesses. But that wasn't the case here. Why? And Mark then comes up with a little more, 56. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies did not agree. There we are. So they were uh, useless. These witnesses were useless. And then if the foolish witnesses, oh, two false witnesses came forward. Verse 60 here in, in Matthew. But found none. They found no one to testify. Even though many false witnesses came forward, they found none. But at last two false witnesses came forward, you know, right? And said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. Well, that's quite a statement now. If you want to take that literally, it would be so amazing, you know. Uh, some of the, uh, to try and come to take, uh, uh, get money with these diggers and that, you know, uh, and they have amazing equipment that come in, uh, and sometimes they have got away with it. So, they understood it, it or, or think they understand it. Of course, the uh, tongue in cheek, as we say, they were laughing, you know, uh, <laughs> laughing at him, you know, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, laughing at it all and thinking it was ridiculous, you know, no sense, uh, you know, that sort of thing. They didn't understand them uh, at all, you know. And of course, the question is, could God do that? Of course, he could have done it, you know, easy enough. But that wasn't be something that God would want to do, you know. Uh, but he'd, uh, it'd have to speak of something more symbolic. The disciples, of course, understood Jesus. Not at the time, though. But they understood him later, didn't they? In John 2, 19, Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. <gasps> ah, that's where he said it, you see. The Jews criticized Jesus. It took, you know, over 40 years to build the temple, Herod did. And how could he, uh, you know, raise it up in? How could he do that? Destroy it and raise it in three days? Uh, so, it took, you know, the resurrection to convince the disciples. After he was risen from the dead, you know, then Jesus is the fulfillment of the temple. And so after he was risen from the dead, they, they understood uh, of what he uh, had uh, said. Right. My. Is Jesus the temple in heaven? That is the big question, you know. Who, what is the temple? Uh, and is he... We, we know that Jesus is the fulfillment of the temple. And then you see that temple in heaven. This is prophecy, of course, we're thinking of now. It may be a little uh, uh, difficult, but prophecy. In Revelation 21, verse 22, But I say, no temple is in it. There's no temple in that city, in that place, uh, that was, and I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are in its temple. You know, it's the Lord God, and even the mention the Father there too is in that, that throne room in heaven, you know, to who might say. Twist 23 The city had no need of the sun. Or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. You see, the Lamb is its light. It's quite amazing. You know, whether that is symbolic that there be no sin, no darkness, uh, or all that, or, what, uh, or whether it will be li absolutely little there, you know, or certainly there be no sin. Uh, God's light will be shining. 
uh, and there'd be no darkness at all, and, and the old life and the old way would be gone. There'd be the new heaven and new earth wherein dwells righteousness. In verse 24, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in this light. All from different countries, you know. Uh, you can't, uh, the Welsh can't be run out, you know. And, uh, uh, right, uh, so. Get up back. We can't get back. You've got maybe X after they're telling you that. Ah, yes, that's right. I'm going to go back. So, we think of the final charge here. And Jesus was, you know, like a lamb silent. Verse 62. There, at that time. And the high priest arose and said to him, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? You know, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before our shearers is silent. The high priest challenged Jesus under oath. Verse 63, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus uh, applies Daniel's prophecy to himself. Uh, chapter 7, Daniel chapter 7, 13. Jesus said to him, it is as you said. Nevertheless, I say to you after, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven, even sitting on the right hand of power and that glory, and coming on the clouds of heaven. So the, the heavenly tribunal would be set. All right, quite amazing. The high priest put on an act, of course, of grief, you know, and he tore his robes, a kind of a symbolic tearing of, of a part of his, his robe, uh, he pronounced. Of course, the most awful charge, blasphemy. The greatest charge that ever could be done is terrible, isn't it? Those present, of course, are all witnesses of it. What he said, they're all hearing what he's had to say. And uh, what do you think? He asked them. They answered him and said, he is deserving of death. They condemned. An innocent man. How terrible, isn't it? All right. They treated Jesus disdainfully. <sighs> How sad. The way they treated him. The lovely Lord Jesus coming to pay for our sins uh, and they uh, give him the worst treatment of any. I think the treatment they gave him was a way beyond any treatment. They treated him, I see, like the worst criminal. They were spitting at him. He did not hold his face from shame and spitting, as Isaiah prophesied, you know. He held back no way. Uh, you know, he didn't answer back, he didn't answer them back or anything. All these things by an illegal court, you know. But you see, he came to, to, to save us. And calling and taunting him to say who hit him, you know. You know, the way they would go on. That's what the way uh, those yeah, they would do. Then the one who healed took his people from sickness and the different things of all kinds. But there it is, you see. He, he's quite, quite amazing, isn't it? So, part six. Uh, and they, we... And we... Uh, sorry... Mm. So it was very, it was great sadness, it was great sorrow for it all. So they condemned an innocent man, they treated Jesus disdainfully, and all that, you see. And the one who healed and taught caused, that caused the blind to see, and so wonderful, and healed so many different people. It should move us to sadness and sorrow for the shame and suffering that we brought upon Jesus, who took the punishment which was due to us. How amazing that he held out his hand of help for forgiveness and cleansing. Oh, what a saviour that he died for me. From condemnation he hath 
uh, made me free. Gone my transgressions, and now I see all because Jesus was wounded for me. And so he was charged with the terrible crime of blasphemy, one that he never committed. And uh, hereafter, he said, reminded his words. Here you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. How, how amazing, wasn't that, you know? And so it's quite so. So let us pray. We are rushing, it might get cut off. Lord, we pray your blessing and your help. We ask, oh Lord, your leading. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. You are the lovely Lord Jesus who died to save us and to redeem us. And we pray, Lord, your blessing. We ask, oh Lord, that you will guide and uphold and help us now. We pray, Lord, your leading. We pray, Lord, your blessing. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you will indeed renew us and revive us. And thank you for your great salvation, so rich and so free. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.